We're going to discuss the abnormal erythrocyte morphology from chapter 10. First, we're going to discuss the variations in the sizes of red cells as an abnormality. And this term is called anisocytosis. It can be detected by examining the blood smear, as well as correlating it with the MCV and the RDW. So the MCV will give us the sizes on volume, and the RDW will alert us to there being different sizes present. Microcytes are erythrocytes with a diameter of less than 7 microns and are present when the MCV is less than 80 femtoliters. This cell usually is hypochromic but can be normal chromic as well. Microcytes in the shape of smears can appear hyperchromic. Macrocytes are larger than normal erythrocytes with a diameter of greater than 8 microns and are present when the MCV is over 100. The cell usually contains an adequate amount of hemoglobin resulting in a normal MCHC and a normal to increased MCH. Young erythrocytes are normally larger than mature erythrocytes, but within a day of entering the bloodstream, the spleen grooms them to a normal size. When the reticulocyte count is increased, the MCV can also be increased. Here is a peripheral smear showing that there is anisocytosis. So you see that there are different sizes present where you have some microcytes as well as normal cells and macrocytes. Now we will discuss the different shapes or abnormal shapes that can be seen under the peripheral smear. The term is called poikilocytosis, and we will discuss each individual abnormality due to its shape. Acanthocytes, or also known as spur cells, are spherical cells that have an irregular thorn-like projection. This is often bulb-like tips. They do not usually have any central pallor. These cells have membranes with free cholesterol accumulating in the outer bilayer of the membrane, leading to decreased fluidity. Remodeling by the spleen results in spheroid cells with a regular surface projection, and these cells are readily trapped within the spleen and destroyed. Cotocytes or target cells are thin bell-shaped cells with an increased surface to volume ratio. On the stained smear, they appear to have a bullseye in the center. An achromatic zone with a thin outer layer, pink staining hemoglobin, surrounds the bullseye. This can be due to an artifact during smear preparation or due to hemoglobin abnormalities. Decryocytes, as seen in image one, are red cells that have an elongation at one end to form a teardrop or pear-shaped cells. The morphology can form after erythrocytes contain cellular inclusions have traveled through the spleen or it's trapped within the bone marrow and the cell cannot return to its original shape. Sickle cells are significant. Also known as drepanocytes, have an elongated crescent-shaped erythrocyte with pointed ends. Some forms have more rounded ends with a flatter concave side. The modified forms of the sickle shape can be capable of reversing to a normal discocyte. And sickle cell formation can be observed from patients with sickle cell anemia. The hemoglobin within the cell is abnormal and polymerizes into rods at decreased oxygen tension, or pH. So gradually, they turn into a holly leaf shape and over time transforms into this irreversible sickle shape. 
If they are present, it's significant. There is no need to enumerate. You just say drapanocytes are present. Sites or Burr cells are smaller than normal red cells with a spiny-like projection evenly distributed all around the cell. The most common type of artifact is this Burr cell and can be seen after the cells have been stored at four degrees for several days. Elliptocytes or pencil or cigar cells vary from elongated oval shape, called ovalocytes, to rod-like cells. Some labs use the term elliptocytes and ovalocytes interchangeably, where others may use it to distinctively delineate the two different morphologies. True elliptocytes have parallel size with the central area of biconcavity, with hemoglobin concentrated at both ends. They're formed after erythrocyte matures and leaves a bone marrow and can be known in hereditary conditions. Figure 1010 shows the differences between an elliptocyte on the left and ovalocyte on the right. They are more oval in shape and usually larger in size. Keratocytes or helmet cells have a concave on one side and two horn-like protrusions at the other end. They're produced when a fibrin strand impales the erythrocyte and the two halves of the erythrocyte hang over the strand like saddlebags and the membrane of the touching sides fuse, producing a vacuole-like inclusion on one side. Nisocytes are rare and that are cells with two concavities. The cell's appearance on the stain smear can vary depending on how the cell comes to rest on the surface. However, they usually have a dark staining band across the center with a pale area on either side surrounded by a rim of pink staining hemoglobin. Leptocytes are thin, flat cells with normal or larger than normal diameter. The cell diameter is normal or increased, and the volume is usually decreased. The cells have an increased surface to volume ratio as a result of the decreased hemoglobin content or increased surface area. It's usually cup shaped like a stomatocyte, but the cup has little depth. Schistocytes are red cell fragments caused by mechanical damage to the cell. They appear in a variety of shapes such as triangles, commas, and helmet shapes. Because they're fragments of cells, they usually are microcytic. They maintain the normal deformability, but their survival in the peripheral blood is reduced. This can be determined by the physician to be significant if there is intervascular hemolysis happening. Spherocytes, like in image 4, are erythrocytes that have lost their biconcavity because of the decreased surface to volume ratio. And on the stained smear, they appear densely stained, darker, pink or red, lacking any kind of central pallor. Although the cell often appears microcytic, their cell volume is usually normal. The spherocyte is the only erythrocyte that can be called hyperchromic because it has an increased MCHC. Matocytes or mouth cells are red cells that have a slit-like area of central pallor. The shape is thought to be the result of increased lipid content in the inner leaflet of the membrane bilayer. It can also be known as artifact. going to talk about the variations in hemoglobin content. Normal erythrocytes have an MCH of approximately 30 picograms. However, the MCHC is a better indicator of chromia or color of erythrocytes on peripheral blood stains. 
These stained smears usually show an area of a central pallor approximately one-third in diameter, which is normal. In certain conditions, red cells contain less hemoglobin than normal and appear to have a larger than normal central pallor or hypochromia. On the other hand, the only erythrocyte that has more hemoglobin than normal is a spherocyte. Polychromatophilic red cells are usually larger than normal cells with a bluish tinge on the peripheral smear. The bluish tinge is caused because of the presence of residual RNA in the cytoplasm. Large numbers of these cells are associated with decreased red cell survival, hemorrhage, when the bone marrow is trying to produce more cells. 10.9 shows a variation in red cell color, its description, and the associated disease state or physiological state that could be happening in hypochromia as well as polychromasia. Please use these tables for studying. We're going to get into the inclusions of red cells. Normally, red cells don't contain any particular inclusions. When you do see them, they can help direct us into a further anemia investigation and are associated with certain kinds of disease states. First, let's talk about basophilic stippling. These are red cells with a bluish black granular inclusions that's distributed throughout the entire cell area. These granules can vary in size and distribution from small and diffuse to coarse and punctuate. The granules are composed of aggregated ribosomes and are sometimes associated with mitochondria or siderosomes. If you see any type of red cell inclusion, you're going to evaluate it as present. It can be associated with lead poisoning and certain types of anemias due to abnormal hemoglobin synthesis or thalassemia. Cabot rings appear as a figure eight ring within the cell. It's thought to be composed of microtubules of the mitotic spindle and can stain a reddish violet on the right stain. This is seen usually in a severe type of anemia or dyserythropoiesis. Howell jolly bodies are small round bodies composed of DNA usually located eccentrically in the red cell. It can occur singly, but it very rarely there are more than two per cell. It stains very dark purple on the right stain and can be noted due to post-splenectomy and certain types of hemolytic anemias or megaloblastic anemia. Heinz bodies are composed of denatured or precipitated hemoglobin they are not seen on the Romanovsky or right stain. They have to be stained with a super vital stain and they appear as purple round shaped bodies of varying sizes, usually close to the cell membrane. They are seen in unstable hemoglobin disorders, oxidizing drugs, post splenectomy or G6PD deficiencies. Pappenheimer bodies are clusters of granules containing iron that are usually found at the periphery of the cell. They are visible with a Prussian blue stain and a right stain. They are seen in thalassemia and sideroblastic anemias and other severe types of anemia. Sideroblasts are iron granules that are found in erythroblasts. They stain with a Pearl's Prussian blue stain, not on the right stain. These are seen with nucleated red blood cells, usually within the bone marrow. Siderocytes are iron granules found in erythrocytes, which can be stained with the Pearl's Prussian blue stain. These are non-nucleated mature cells that have stainable iron granules in the center of it. Please review Table 10.8 for the erythrocyte abnormal morphology, the terminology, as well as the description, 
of what is going on with the cell and its associated disease. We have gone through all of the different sizes and shapes of abnormal red cell morphology. We will be associating the abnormal morph morphology with disease states once we talk about the different types of an anemias. The terminology and synonyms should be known for both sets of scientific and regular common knowledge terms. Know the description of each one and be able to visualize them because we will be looking under the microscope to identify the abnormal morphology. The associated disease states we will discuss further as we go into abnormal morphology. There is more abnormal morphology here and please ensure that you know the term with the drawing of the morphology. As with inclusions, you are going to evaluate them as present. There is no need to enumerate small, medium, and large. If you see it, it is present on your differential sheet. Please know the terminology for any abnormal inclusion. Know its description and what it is composed of, as well as can you see it on the peripheral smear on a right stain, or do you need a special supravital stain, like the Heinz body stain? In addition to these inclusions, please get a visual for what they look like as you will be able to identify these in the laboratory.